So on this week's podcast, I'm delighted to have my podcast landlord with me. Um, <laughs> Josh Goodgen is the Managing Director of Get Your Media and Get Your Media, uh, the studio where we host our podcast and have been since the start. Uh, but Josh, more than just being a podcast studio host, is um, an expert in all things content. So we've entitled this week's podcast content 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 and i think as we approach 2020 i'd like to explore with josh why people should have a content plan and what they're going to do in 2020 with that content plan so welcome to your own studio josh i know thanks you've, you've stole my uh, my joke i'm gonna say oh it's the right setup you've got here <laughs> <laughs> well to be honest it is the right setup we've got here which is why i keep coming back and uh, you know it's great to interview you as a, a an expert in your field and um, i'd like to explore that with a few questions and maybe just inspire some of our um, listeners and viewers in terms of just thinking about what they're going to do with content because there's a lot of misconceptions about the whole you know i should be doing this i should be doing that and yeah. um you know i think it'd be quite an interesting end of year podcast for people to start thinking about plans for 2020 so welcome back welcome welcome aboard to your own studio i'm excited it's, i'm glad to be on this side at desk for once excellent you're normally behind the scenes pressing buttons and doing lighting and yeah uh, i'm in sound, your i'm in your position or, or like doing, doing interviewing doing, doing some sound checks and things so yeah. Okay, well, listen, let's talk about uh, uh, content. Um, actually, I should have said I'm not getting charged for this studio That's time. That's free, this one. <laughs> Already joked <laughs> there. Right. <clears throat> so let's start with podcasting because obviously it makes a, 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 a common sense starting point. I am a massive podcast fan. Um, I listen to very little else now in the in the car. I used to listen to radio. I used to get annoyed at things like talk sport and, you know, I put the radio on and listen to some fairly bland tunes on radio too and things. But podcasts seem to have taken off immeasurably really uh, I won't share with my eclectic tastes in terms of what I listen to because I think that might uh, uh, turn a few listeners off but um, the reason I decided to record a podcast series on my own was um, I'd been a guest on a few and I got some really good reaction not necessarily to me being a guest but to the whole medium of podcasts really um, it is there's why should somebody consider doing a podcast what's the reason people do it going forward then well i think i mean like like you said podcasts are taken off and it's still we're still in like its infancy you know i feel so i feel like it you know you'll see you'll see in this last year more and more people are saying right i'm gonna start a podcast i'm gonna start a podcast yeah the reason i started a podcast is it, it's because it's such a simple form of content to create that mm -hmm. is it like selfishly like it was just an easy thing to do because I, I came from, uh, I do filmmaking and that style of content creation, vlogging, and it's really time consuming. Like the edit and the storytelling process is, is very difficult. Mm. So podcasting for me seemed super easy. You know, invite guests on, similar to what you've done, invite guests on, uh, we can leverage each other's networks and we can sort of prove yourself as an authority in your given field, whatever your topics of you know conversation are. So okay. I think that's what I think the benefits of podcasts are, especially in the business circle that we're in. Um, and Again, if you were in a, another field of entertainment or whatever, that's another avenue to go down. So I've got two podcasts. So I've got an entertainment-based one, which is specifically around martial arts, which I do with a UFC fighter. Yeah. Uh, and then I've got a business one. So I've got like two little, you know, USPs as, as such, you know. And they're both your podcasts that you're involved in. You yeah. also have the studio where you've got guests coming in on all sorts of subjects, haven't you, really? That's it. I mean, just out of this studio on a Tuesday night, we've got the uh, the Talking Shut podcast, which is the Leeds United-based podcast and they've had you know angus Kinnear in um adam forshaw we've had leeds united television in yeah um and and they stream to you know tens of thousands of people on a tuesday night so well as a as a season ticket holder at middlesbrough i'll let that one pass mate <laughs> but uh, and we are playing them well actually by the time this podcast goes out we'll have played them and probably lost heavily ellen road so let's move on from the leeds united podcast <laughs> mate but uh, uh it is certainly i mean it's a bit like um peter k once said about garlic bread it's the future um, it is does feel a bit like the Wild West out there, though, a little bit. You know, there's there's loads of people uh, gold rushing into podcasts. New ones come up every day and new content's being created by the hour, really. Um, there's platforms all over the place. Um, you mentioned you think it's, it's, it's early stages, so you've sort of answered my question. It's not too late to join the gold rush then? Not at all. I think, you know, that, you know what it's like. It's a new shiny thing. People will, will be jumping on the bandwagon, but it's not who's the best. It's like who's left. Do you know, mm. a lot of people will jump on it. You don't get in instant graf gratification. You know, you'll, you'll know full well how many, you know, how many people tune in each week mm. and how many people listen. And it's vanity metrics. A lot of people are like, oh, I want tens of thousands of listeners and a sponsor and this and that. And they think it's going to happen overnight. And mm. it doesn't. It could take years, you know, months, years, and it might never happen. And like one thing that I emphasize to my business clients like yourself, if you only get 10 listeners on this podcast, but the 10 of your ideal customer or mm. client or somebody associate that you want to be involved with, 
that's perfect. You know, okay. it's irrelevant of how many people listen if it's ten of the ideal customer. And, and people are sat there going, oh, yeah, that actually makes sense. And it's like, well, yeah, would you ever have a thousand people that don't care, is never going to engage with you, or 10 people that are actually useful to you and your, yeah. you know, you're building your future? Well, we've we've recorded a, a lot more at the moment than we've released. And we, I think we'll be on release about number 10 or nine or 10 by the time this yeah, one yeah. goes out. Um, and we've already had quite a bit of traction. The guests have had on have circulated the podcast to their networks and have had some really good feedback. Um, and I actually used one of the podcasts. Uh, as part of a proposal for a, a client, I said, look, this is the subject we're going to talk about. This is the area we're going to work on. And it was actually the first one I recorded with Marianne Smith about the maximising your customer oh, journey. Yeah. We were putting a proposal together for a client about maximising your customer journey. And I said, look, have a listen to the podcast as part of the proposal. And he said, that is what got us over the line. He said, I really enjoyed that, understood it. I got where you were coming from. So... You know, he might have been the only listener that week. I'm sure he wasn't, but you know, yeah, yeah. if that's the case, it makes sense, doesn't it? Really? Totally. I mean, uh, like from a, obviously, it's about content and, and the strategy that I've sort of put together for my clients for yourself. Like you mm. know, the distribution and how we do it, and I'm, I, I don't mind going into it. But you, it's a relatively small investment for a maximum return of, of content because you've got a long form piece, thirty minute podcast, whatever. We've got, we then can clip it into as many clips as you want, you know, talking bite-sized pieces. So, you know, a three minute video where you might be talking about the customer journey with Marianne, yeah. release that online onto LinkedIn. That might be the thing that hooks somebody to go, you know what, I'm gonna listen to the full podcast. Yeah. Uh, again, you could take the um, long form content, content uh, podcast and turn it into a blog post. Mm. So you can transcribe it. You can, there's many ways that you can take that one piece and make many forms of content out of it. Yeah. And that's the key, that's the, like, that's the the winning formula rather than just putting a podcast out and on for the best. So going back to traction and, and, and that kind of stuff, what I tend to do on a, uh, mine are released on a Tuesday. I chose Tuesday and like you say, you advise your clients anyway. I chose Tuesday because in my world of podcasting, I don't get many released on a Tuesday. Monday's packed. Thursday, Friday, said you packed. I'll, I'll pick Tuesday. Yep. So every Tuesday morning, mine go out and I uh, have a, a little methodology on LinkedIn. I p promote that on my feed. I promote it to my groups, but I also get all the, previous guests and future guests to promote it to their network. Um, is there anything else that you would advise people to be doing in terms of getting their podcast reach out there? I think, um, I mean, obviously, if it, you, you just specifically said LinkedIn there, but if you look at, depending on where your audience are, you've got YouTube, you've got Facebook, you've got Instagram, mm. and you need it needs to be everywhere. Okay. And, uh, another sort of mistake that a lot of people make is they might make a podcast for example and they'll put it on youtube like a video podcast on youtube and it'll go on itunes and, and spotify um and then they'll put the link from youtube and put it on linkedin and on facebook and, and instagram but when uh somebody's on whatever social media platform that they want to be on be it linkedin they don't want to click a link to go to another app so that that then hinders your views right you know because the reason that people they'll drive traffic to YouTube, for example, is because they want the num the view count on there. Yeah. Again, vanity metrics. Whereas I say, get it, get the original piece of content and upload it individually to every platform, so mm. that people can watch it on the native platform that they're on. And whichever one they choose is entirely up to them, yeah. isn't it? Then? And then in the copy of what, where you've put the post, there's links to every place for them to, to obviously go and listen. So whether it be iTunes, Android, Spotify, um, and all these places, mm. it, you know, options there for them. Okay. Well, I was inspired as a guest on a podcast called The Next 100 Days. Really, really good podcast, business podcast being good. I think there are 200 episodes now, which is a, a hell of an achievement. Um, and that's a business podcast. They have some really interesting guests on and me. And, um, <laughs> you know, basically um, I thought to myself, what a great sort of uh, platform really. But for anyone who's thinking about potentially taking out a, a, um, a, a podcast um, series or starting to record their own, what advice would you give anyone as a potential host, both as a host themselves, but also on a, maybe on a technical level? I guess, obviously do a bit of research and look at the podcast that you like and try and emulate it ever so slightly, but ultimately the audience is there for you. So if you've got, if you have got the character and you can be a good podcast host, because it's not, not for everyone, it's a little bit like video, you know, there's a lot of experts out there saying that, you know, everyone, anyone can do a video, you can do it. And, but we all know how bad it looks when somebody's sat in the car with a camera up the nose yeah, uh, and they've got no character or crack and they've not thought about what they're going to say. It's just horrible, isn't it? <laughs> it's, so, well, it, it's, it's, I, I think the phrase you'd use is sort of eggy, wouldn't it? It's a bit sort of eggy and, and yeah, just embarrassed. It's just everyone's not, like watching it with it. Ooh. And it's horrendously like detrimental to your brand as well. Like, which people don't consider, you know, like you, you might have this, uh, people might have this perceived idea of who you are and what you, you know, what your company is like. And then the, the cards come falling down when they see this video of you sat in your 
you know, in, in your car, in a, mm. in a car park outside Starbucks, doing a video telling people what you had for your breakfast. You know, it just, it don't, it don't work. And it's same for podcasts. I think really consider what you're going to do, plan it out. Like you're pretty methodical with your mm. planning process. A lot of people sort of free ball it a little bit and just go for it. If, if I can just interject there, some of my clients have now fallen off their chair when you talk about me being methodical and planning. So <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, for this, for this, uh, for, I am actually, but for this, I definitely am. Yeah. All I do is put a structure together, some loose questions. I share them with the guests. But I say, look, let's have a free form chat based around a bit of a structure. The reality of that is uh, it, it's, it gives a bit of a flow and a bit of an idea. So we don't get guests coming on thinking, Where's this going? What am I yeah. expected to say? So this, that's one of the reasons I do that. Which is good. I mean, like when I do my podcast, my business podcast, I don't tell my guests. Like mm. I won't. I I just go down my own rabbit holes. You know, mine yeah. are a little bit longer. Like mine yeah. tend to run for about an hour. Mm. Uh, I just want to see where the where the conversation is going to take us. But like you said, from back to your question about like the technical side of it, I think podcasting it's it's relatively easy. You know, mm. you can sit and have a chat with anybody for half an hour. You yeah. only need two or three bullet points, and you're gonna you're gonna have a good conversation. You know. Yeah. Uh, and technically the, the equipment that you need, you, you, you can do it on your phone. Do you know, like the, the equipment's there, like you, you've got your phone, you can make videos and podcasts on, on there. But again, going back to brand, it's like anything, isn't it? You know, there's, I call it guerrilla filming. Someone's doing a film on the, on the, on their iPhone. Somebody's doing a, a podcast on the phone. That's fine. Um, I've chose to invest in a studio because yep. I think it's about elevating that kind of, I guess, not just professionalism, but the quality. Uh, and obviously you guys provide a, a, an editing service, which I'm kind of, I could do myself, but I'd never get around to. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. So I guess it's just it's just a question of what your budget is and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve, aren't you really? So Totally, yeah. I mean, I think the like the entry point for, for using a studio like ours, you know, we've got like hourly rates. I think it's, it's, it's fairly priced, to be honest. Mm. I, I dare say we could probably charge more, um, mm. like looking at the market now and seeing some of the prices that are out there down south, uh, you know, we are well cheaper, so we need but, to... But, but you're not going to put your price up for early adopters like me, though. Of yeah, course not. No. That's fine right now. Okay, now, this podcast I've entitled Content, Content, Content. So apart from podcasting, what else would a, an agile, ambitious business um, be considering as a cornerstone for their content offering in 2020, do you reckon? What should they be? What should be on their radar and what should they be aware of or thinking about, even if they're thinking about it, to dismiss it, for example? I think, I mean, like going forward, if, if we just look at your podcast as an example, obviously we're still in 2019, but going forward into 2020, I think leveraging each other's networks and collaborating with other business owners, or you know, if we're going to talk business specifically, I think this form of content is, is perfect for 2020. You know, it, you become an authority. It gets you through doors that you might not have got through before mm. uh, from a business development standpoint. And a lot of people, again, podcast, just because we're in a studio recording this podcast. Now, if you recorded a, a video interview, the audio could be taken from that and put on a podcast network. Mm. So it's, it's it's just about leveraging whatever piece, whatever you're creating as much as possible. So like we said before about getting it transcribed, blog posts and all this, mm. that's what you want to be doing. So I think I would be saying to people, and it's what I said to yourself, Marianne, it'd be the interview style uh, professional pieces that you're creating um, going forward and getting them on LinkedIn and, and becoming an authority. Mm. But recording them at high quality as well okay um i think a lot of people you'll you'll know if you if you watch a video for example on linkedin and it could be you know 4k footage you know crisp as you like but the audio is horrendous yeah people cannot forgive bad audio and that's right. one no, thing is, is that is that an, is that sort of a, an industry standard yeah, yeah so yeah. like if, if we created this podcast for example and the video was slightly out of focus i mean mm. we did one we, we, we had a camera malfunction do you remember we did yeah um and there were three podcasts that were out of focus. Mm. It's a disaster. However, we've got professional audio recording. So people, it, it's, it's all right. You it's can get forgivable. through it. You yeah. can get through it. Whereas if it was the opposite way around where, right, it looks amazing, but it sounds horrendous. Mm. People are just like, I can't, I can't deal with that. And that's what you see on, on LinkedIn a lot is, you know, there might be somebody filming with an iPhone in 4K or whatever. Yeah. Um, but you're in an echoing room and yeah. you can't, you just can't there's engage no, with it. There's no mic engagement, is there, on no. that basis? Yeah. I used to work, and, and I still uh, uh, do bits of work with a company uh, who do sort of live broadcast and big event stuff. And um, Karen, who's the, the MD, would always say, um, it's the audio that will get you. You know, so if you're doing a live broadcast and you're doing uh, maybe mixing desks at yeah. big events and things, and she would always say, we'll invest in the sound technician because the sound technician is the guy or the lady who's going to deliver the goods. And and she, and she said that for years. Totally. So. I mean, like, you'll have been <clears> to an event before. Right? There'll be a good vibe in the room. It'll all be going well. Mm. And then two microphones will come too close together and there'll be that screech and it absolutely splits the room in half and everyone's gone, oh my God, what is happening? Like, yeah, yeah. It just ruins the atmosphere straight away, you know. 
Okay, no worries. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to come on to the the, the idea of free because um, obviously a lot of content these days is available free and things like this podcast and loads of other things. Um, is there not a correlation between free and poor quality or should we all be giving more free stuff away when it comes to creating and sharing our content? What's your view on on that? I mean, if anybody follows any, like, so this is, again, I'll split the audience a little bit, but Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, the American entrepreneur, I don't know if you'd be aware of him, but mm. he says that um, his, like, philosophy is, you know, it should be, your content and your information should be free and they should be paying for implementation. So, oh. so you're giving out all this free content. Like myself, I'll be giving advice now, you know, you'll be giving advice on every podcast. It's free, it's free for people to access. But they should be coming and, coming to you and paying for the implementation of the process. So right. I give away a lot of free advice on content creation, how to produce videos, how to create videos, editing. But when it comes to like the, when they need the big hitting stuff, they'll mm. come to me as an authority to pay for the implementation. So they're already in advance thought process about you being the expert or the authority and they're already in a, in a state of thinking, well, there's gonna be a cost involved in that because, you know, I'm paying for an authority to help you implement. So an idea that maybe has come up on a podcast, an idea that's come up through some content, something that you've produced and said, I, I want more of that. So they'll, they'll be inspired by the yeah. free stuff to pay for the good stuff. Totally, yeah. I think it, it's one of, it just this style of, of, of content, it, it leads itself to you, be, you becoming an authority. You know how many people are out there that, like, they've got expert on the LinkedIn bio. Mm. Anyone can be an expert. You walk into any networking room, they stand up and we are the expert you know, whatever, whatever insurance, like everyone's an expert, but are you really, you know, like mm. what have you got to back it up? And it's, it's all your content. And, and this is what I talk about with like the buyer's journey. So my buyer's journey, if you look at engaging with get your media, for example, the touch points are taken care of by our online content. So we do it's all inbound leads that we don't actually have to physically engage with a the client. They're ready to buy when they pick up the phone mm. because they can see the quality of his work. They can watch my previous podcast and get an idea for what I'm like as a person. Yeah. They can see, what Leanne's like, you know, on on various pieces of content online. And they've already got a good understanding of who we are as individuals, as a company, and whether they want to work with us. It's so, already, it's already do, they've already done the fit matrix, haven't they? You, you're a good fit, so yeah. let's let's explore that. And that's because we've put that much free content out there mm. that the buyer's journey is taken care of. So this, for you, it is free, but it's part of your marketing strategy. Mm. It's a mar it is a, it's a marketing tool, so you've got to look at it as like what what is going to be your return on on this investment. So yeah, yeah it's it's free to an ex it is free, but well, it well it's already leveraged uh, uh, the opportunity I mentioned earlier, yeah. where <clears throat> where somebody was swayed by the content because I, I pushed that to them and said, look, this is the exact subject we've been going to be talking about in in this particular proposal. Have a listen, have a look, and he, and he, he was really super impressed and. And on that basis, you know, that gets you through, like you say, the buyer's journey is already well advanced, isn't it? Right? And that's it. And I think <clears> if you want to become, so realistically, you want to become an influencer in, in whatever field that mm. you're in, you know, like I want to be an influential person in the video and content world. Yeah. To do that, I need to put in, in, enough free content out there that people do consider me as as an expert and as somebody that they want to go to. And then they become your biggest advocates as well because you've given them loads of free stuff. They might never buy from you, which is yeah. absolutely fine. But if you then become like, I mean, so you look at some of the, some of the books like Key Person of Influence, Oversubscribed, you need, if you've got more people that want to buy from you that you can sell to, mm. your price has just gone up. Yeah. So that's the goal. That's that, That's the key to all this. From, from my marketing strategy, I want to have more people buy from me, want to buy from me than I can sell to, so I yeah. can create my own market and mm. charge the premiums that we can charge. Yeah, you know? the rates that you want to, we should be able to. Yeah, and when, again, like our, our form of content that we do create for our clients, it is quite disruptive. It is different. Mm. It's not like your standard, you know, boring corporate videos. We want to make stuff different because we enjoy that. Mm. And it, it works. It actually breaks them, like it breaks the monotony of, of social media that we see today. You know, like it is pretty monotonous. Everyone sees the same rubbish. Yeah, like, yeah. So we, we're trying to break the noise and for our clients. Well, let, let's talk rubbish and let's talk homemade video. <laughs> um, you know, you've got an excellent video studio here, which we use. Um it's in Morley, near Leeds, if those who are listening, you know, that's in the north of England. So if you're listening internationally, jump on a flight and get yourself to Morley and use the <laughs> studio here. So there's your plug for you there, Josh. Cheers, mate. Um, but given that everyone, literally everyone's got a smartphone and everyone's got video capability on that smartphone, why would a business not just shoot video content themselves? You know what they can? Like, there's enough 
Okay, people are lazy. There's enough information out there. You can go on Google, on YouTube, and you can learn how to create an absolutely amazing video using your smartphone. Mm. I've delivered training courses to businesses and shown them exactly how to create amazing videos on the smartphone. And guess what? Still don't do it. Right. Do you know what I mean? So that that's an interesting perception, right? So you are creating self-competition then, aren't you? To yeah. a certain extent, you're sharing content that says... You know, we've got a really good studio, we've got all the kits, we've got all the facilities, we've got all the green screens, the lighting, we've got the professional uh, audio and studio facilities, um, but I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. So I love the idea that you don't mind doing that. Absolutely not. I, I, just, I mean, I, we're doing well as a business, it's do, you know, it's doing well and this, giving away this free information, it's working, you know. You could tell, you can lead a horse to water, literally, and you cannot make him drink. Mm. And it's the same with this. Like, I could tell you exactly, I can, I've literally, if you, if, in the video world, there's a, a thing called like kit.com and on there, there'll be, on mine, there's a, every piece of video kit that I've, I own. Mm. Lights, cameras, everything's on a list. There are affiliate links, so I can earn money from them if anybody buys through it. Yeah. But it tells you exactly what I own. And I could create another one for a podcast and show you exactly what the mics we use, the mixer, computers, cameras, lights. And can say right, you spend you know five grand, you've got all this kit. You are you going to first make the capital investment, and then after that, you're going to learn how to edit properly. Are you going to learn how to distribute? Mm. It just it, you know it's th this is my profession. This is like our life, you know. And uh, other business owners ain't got the time to invest in that. So ultimately, they're going to have to pay for that implementation if they want it to that quality. Well, well, you you've got a couple of packages. When we first started, um, <clears throat> you offered me a couple of packages. <coughs> One essentially was a uh, we'll do the recording and send you the I don't know if you call them rushes or B roll. I don't know what the technical term is, but you'll send me the content. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and then basically I do what I want with it. But I know as a busy business owner, that would probably I'd still have I'd still have all the podcasts recorded now, but there wouldn't be anywhere because uh, you know editing and, and uploading and all that kind of thing. So I guess you're looking for people who who value the expertise and the and the support and the, the wraparound management service, really, aren't you? But yeah, I mean, even the guys that come in and use it and do take it away with them, mm. you know, we still advise them on what needs to be done. And it, but it's up to them if they can if they can implement it in the way that we do. Do you know? Yeah. Does that make sense? It does, yeah, yeah. I think, um, it, yeah, it's just one of them. I, you can come in and create the recording yourself. We'll give you an MP3, give you an MP4 file, and, you know, do what you need to do with it. Mm. Um, but... Yeah, but people don't know, do they? Like, no. say, it just sits on there. It's, it's, just it's on really difficult. List. I mean, like, where this, like, we're just as guilty, you know, like a, a marketing digital agency. You know, we don't release as much content as we should because yeah. we're too busy doing as client work. Yeah, and every business kind of does the same thing. You know, like they'll be too busy with the client work to concentrate on their own stuff. So, like, yeah. we've uh, as a company, we've had to get better at creating our own stuff as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, well, let's go back to video. I've I've been working in the business development sales world for about hundred years, as my kids would say. <laughs> Um, and um, video has been around a long time in terms of, um, you know, platform uh, stuff, websites, etc. cetera. Um, but in terms of video and stats, etc., everyone says you must have it on your channels, particularly your website, and that if you're going to optimise your video lengths, it's got to be short, sharp, and that kind of stuff. What's your view on, on video, particularly as a content? Um, perhaps some advice for the uh, listeners and viewers on style and length of video yeah and and you know what what's optimum if there is such a thing i mean it's really subjective um obviously like there's these people that i'll, I'll do a raw piece of content they'll be delivering a, a piece of dialogue and it could last 10 minutes but they could be the most engaging individual that you've ever seen in your life mm. you know and you are completely captivated by what what they're saying and you know but they could be the same per like a different person doing the same talk that it just absolutely dries a bone right. you can't engage with them and it's like it's painful to watch so that, that's a, that's another thing that people need to consider. Like, are you in a position to be on camera or do you need a bit of training? Do you need a bit of development? Do you need mm. a bit of advice and, and educating on how to deliver on camera? Yeah. And then as far as, like, you know, optimum. So if, so if you look at the vlog world, like vlogging is, is really popular now. People yeah. want to be able to vlog the process in business. It's all about a storytelling process. So that's another thing that people need to learn about like you know the, like a three-act narrative like just literally the beginning middle and end like how you create a video and and wrap it all up at the end mm. is really important and especially like for a business one you know you, you, at the end you need to have your call to actions like what do you want your audience to do like if you want them to sign up to a mailing list like tell them if you want them to subscribe tell them yeah. if you want them to listen to your podcast tell them point them in point them in yeah. a direction that you want them to go so do, do people miss that by doing it themselves for example and not understanding yeah and uh, it's just <laughs> It's a, it's, it's a really, it's really subjective. I think anyone can make video. Mm. 
but not everyone should make video. <laughs> well, let me pick you up on that I, in a good way. Um, I teach presentation skills, uh, keynote speaker uh, uh, skills, those kind of areas. Yeah. So um, for a lot of people, public speaking is up there with sort of divorce, um, <laughs> running over a family pet, uh, root canal surgery all on the same day really as a as a genuine fear uh, and I work with lots of individuals to help them to overcome those fears but you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear if someone can't tell a story can't relate anecdotes can't comfortably engage an audience I, I always say just because you're a subject matter expert doesn't make you interesting and, and and is that the same for video then I think so I mean it could be a bit harsh to say that I think <laughs> You can make any like you, you can be creative in the edit. You can make it. You can bring stuff to life. But mm. like, if somebody was just deliver a raw piece of content, then yeah, no, you can't. You can't really do it. And um, there are experts out there. And you know, if if it, if you were a subject matter expert and you wanted to create videos, I would probably advise that somebody interview you. Yes, and somebody that could lead the conversation, and you then can answer and with some creative ed- editing, you know, cutting in the right places, keep it engaging and it'll be absolutely fine. Mm. So anyone could do it, mm. do you know, but it'd it take a professional to be able to pull it together so it looks well. Actually, relating that back to the keynote side of things, I've seen people who are not very good at keynotes, but are very good on a panel. So they've been led or yep. they've been asked a question and then they can light up with their knowledge in that answer. So I guess in that respect, it's not too dissimilar, is it? Yeah, I mean, that's it. Like you said, like people are absolutely petrified of, I don't like public speaking. I don't mm. like, it's something I'm, I'm really like, I want to do it. You know, I'd like mm. to be able to, to do, deliver keynotes and public speaking because I've got stuff that I, I want to say, but I'm absolutely cool as a cucumber on a camera, which is bizarre because it's not like people are petrified on cameras, but they might be able to deliver a presentation, for example, you yeah, know, yeah. to a room full of people. Different skill sets. Yeah. Isn't it? So, and also different experiences. And, uh, you know, the minute you put a camera under someone's nose, people go into different worlds, you know, you, you're either relaxed about it and yeah. ignore it, or you, it becomes the entire focus and it puts you off your stride, doesn't it, yeah. really? Yeah, oh, that's so. interesting. Okay. Um, listen, there's a hunger for content, isn't there? There's so many channels and, you know, 24-hour news and 24-7 internet and, and huge amounts of social media channels. So um, given that, would you say um, a business should have some kind of strategy around how they maximise it, you know, in terms of businesses having a content strategy rather than just reacting to stuff what's your yeah, view on that I, I mean we're all guilty of reactive just social media for example like you'll just put a post on it at seven o'clock at night or at ten, you know you, you just do it and like, i've done my bit for today yeah but if you actually like work backwards like what do you want to achieve from it you know you might be ready to sell an online course in 12 months so you need a strategy in place to build up an audience to be able to sell to them in 12 months for example yeah and i think that's it's the same with like that's how your content should be delivered like what is the end goal like what do you want to achieve from this mm. and then all your content should then feed towards that it's a, it's a bit like a business plan like what are our end goals like do we want to sell it yeah yeah if we want to sell it right this is what we need to do mm. we need to build up to it it's the same with your content like what are you trying to do and there's different types of content like video for example there's vlogs product videos you know there's all sorts of stuff that you could create mm. and it's it's it is going down the different avenues to get to the end goal and yeah it, to, for it to pay off you know like so how many of your clients who come in here or approach you potential clients um, don't have a, a, a plan or an end game, then how many of them would just come in and say, oh, I just think I should do this? Quite a lot. Quite a lot of big companies as well, you know. Mm. Like, they'll come in and they'll say, right, we want this video making, and it sounds like proper cheesy. It's like, well, why? Do you know, like, I've turned jobs down because it just doesn't make sense, you know. Like, you mm. could pay us the money, but, like, it's... Uh, I've got a bit like my values that I took from like the Navy about like integrity and stuff I've carried into business for a reason. And mm-hmm. that's then will obviously lead into my personal brand where people will be a good advocate of, of, of us. And I, I will say to a client, if that's not right for you, we, let's not do it. Let's explore another avenue, you know, yeah. and look at your plan. Um, Cause that's, that is another sort of like USP for us, I guess we can create any form of content, video or podcast, whatever. Yeah. How, how are we going to distribute it and what's the, what is the, from a marketing perspective, what is the end goal? Are we trying to get somebody to buy a product, for example? Yeah. Like, let's have a look at where that fits in your digital marketing strategy. Have you got a sales funnel? Have you got a landing page? Have you got an email marketing campaign in place? Like, what have you got? So it's not just the isolated end of, of, of coming in and using the studio. It's what are you going to do with it? Because I think we spoke at the very early days of our relationship about kind of, you know, content's all well and good. But what do you want to achieve? Yeah, and and it's really important to 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 advise businesses, I guess, in terms of you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't go for finance without a, a, a finance plan. You wouldn't look to grow your business without a business plan. You wouldn't look to develop sales without a sales strategy. And yet, people still 
just do content on an ad hoc basis, then, yeah. don't they? Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. I think it's you've got to, you've got to have a plan in place. It, it's, it is imperative. Like I came from, so we when we first started getting our media, we, we were heavily in digital marketing, like running targeted Facebook ads, creating landing page pages, you know, uh, sales funnels, all that sort of stuff. And that's a proper difficult sell. Like that's really hard to sell to a business. It's not like a tangible thing. Yeah, you know, you're, you're almost selling like snake oil like people are like i don't understand you you're, you're selling smoke aren't you yeah really? but you can't you can't sort of super difficult to sell and then like if you do sell it it's like right great we can set up a landing page we can do this we can put out some generic posts we can do all this sort of stuff but if you haven't got the content to back it up it don't really work and it's yeah. the same on both sides like if you create all this content and you've got it here if you haven't got the digital marketing strategy to follow up with it you've kind of just got a thing yeah but the thing there is like worth money so when we started obviously creating video creating content it's easier for us to sell it as a product because you are physically, like I'm physically giving you a product. Yes. And then when I'm telling you the strategy as well, that's like a bonus. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Like, so I've got, I've got a cupboard full of content, but you're saying no one's looking in your cupboard. So how do we get the cupboard doors open? How yeah. do we get out there? And yeah. how do we open your shop so people can see it all? Yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> Yeah, that's excellent. Okay. Well, listen, I always finish my podcast interviews with what I call the golden bullet question, okay? So I can't believe we're approaching another decade, by the way. I still remember the millennium, uh, you know, as if it was only yesterday, and, and, and we're shortly going to arrive in the second decade of the uh, of, of the new uh, uh, the new century. Wow. Um, but what piece of advice would you give around the whole content agenda to a business when they're looking in terms of... Um, you know, what should they be focusing on? What's next? What's easy? If they're not doing anything, what should they do first? You know, what would be your golden bullet advice to a company considering a content strategy, assuming they haven't already got a content strategy in place, which we've already identified most people haven't? Yeah, I think um, like looking at your audience, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming a little bit, but I have seen quite a lot of your content online and they're all going to be businesses on LinkedIn. Yeah. I think it's just getting that presence on LinkedIn. Like at the minute, 2020, 2019, 2020, LinkedIn is the place to be, without a doubt. For B2B work, it's yeah. there because the organic reach is massive. Videos ranking higher than ever. Um, and LinkedIn Live is going to be a thing soon. Mm. And I probably said it to you at the beginning, like all my clients that sit down with me, I'm like, look, if you're creating podcasts out of here, if you get approved for LinkedIn Live, it's still in beta tested. We are going live. Like whatever you, whatever plan you've got now, Nick, if yeah. they give you LinkedIn Live tomorrow, yeah. it's our window. We're going live <clears> because it's it's massive. It's so big. Game changer. It's, yeah, and we've been fortunate enough. I'm pretty sure we're the only studio in the UK that are actually facilitating LinkedIn Live. One of our clients, uh, Graham, is an industry leader in the water, is a water industry leader. Yeah. And he's got LinkedIn Live. So now we produce LinkedIn Live uh, podcasts. So all that is, I guess, is we're recording this at the time to release later. Yeah. We'd record this and stream it, like, well, we'd record it as well, but we'd stream it live to LinkedIn as, as a live piece that people can well, listen the, into. So the rules, the, the rules are you've got to physically go live, so you can't, yeah, yeah. You can't put a pre-recording, a pre-recorded thing out. But yeah. um, the reason I'm, I, I'm talking about LinkedIn and LinkedIn Live like that is you need to build up your following and your audience on LinkedIn so that you yeah. need to be consistent with your posts and your message. So if you can create engaging insightful content on LinkedIn now and build your audience, mm. you might be fortunate enough to be offered LinkedIn Live before everyone else. Right. So you've got, you'll have a pretty big LinkedIn network. Won't yeah, you, I've right? got, yeah, about 5,000 plus uh, followers and connections and stuff. Yeah, so you're, you'll be up there, you'll get good engagement. If I were a company now, uh, it's just starting out, or even if, if I'm well established and you might be one of them that's really successful in, in your really successful business, you just don't use LinkedIn. Mm. I'd be saying, right, our content strategy is solely based on LinkedIn. Let's get these followers up. Let's get people engaging. And before you know it, it'll spread like wildfire because yeah. it's it's like it's still the early days of, of of that style for LinkedIn. Like they are giving you the organic reach. So. Excellent. Okay. Well, Josh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you for sharing your uh, views on all things content, um, from podcast to videos to LinkedIn Live, and you know what's coming next. Hope the audience have been inspired to think about that and not just start twenty twenty with a, a random oh let's do something. Um, so thank you for being a, a, both a, a great guest and a great landlord. No, thanks for having me. Thanks no problem. Me. Cheers.